నమస్తే ఫ్రెండ్స్ హ్యాపీ ఉగాది హ్యాపీ యుగాది హ్యాపీ సంవత్సరాది హ్యాపీ గుడి పడవా టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ అండ్ ఎ వెరీ హ్యాపీ లోనార్ న్యూ ఇయర్ క్రోధి క్రోధి లిటరల్లీ మీన్స్ యాంగ్రీ ఫ్యూరియస్ అండ్ వైలెంట్ అఫ్ కోర్స్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇయర్ ఈజ్ జస్ట్ వన్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ దెర్ ఆర్ సో మెనీ అదర్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ టు జడ్జ్ ఐ ఇయర్ బై అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ ఇన్ దిస్ కేస్ ద నేమ్ ఈజ్ క్వైట్ యాప్ట్ అండ్ ఇన్ ద కరెంట్ క్రియేషన్ based on hindu chronology 1 billion 655 million 885125 years have passed so that gives you a long perspective of our place in this universe since the mahabharata war 5090 years have passed and since kali yuga started this is year number 5125 Uh, before i de- delve deep just a list of topics that i will be covering i'll be going through some general trends for this year and also results for some selected nations at the, at the beginning itself instead of at the end like i normally do and then i'll do the standard stuff i'll talk about what is panchanga the importance of panchanga panchanga shravanam and then we'll cover the annual planetary cabinet and eclipses and other key transits during the year will be highlighted so that you can spend that time in uh, religious practices and some of the standard numbers that are given for 12 moon signs and 27 or 28 nakshatras will be covered and finally i will be highlighting some major transits for various janma rasis moon signs and provide some remedies that can either increase the pluses or decrease the minuses first a general long term trend unfortunately this year is starting on april 9th and on april 8th we have a total solar eclipse and on april 10th we have a saturn mars conjunction two really uh, undesirable things happening around the beginning of the year and this is not really a great year and from a long term perspective we are in the middle of a period of major geopolitical transformation as i have said many times the period from 2020 till 2036 is a kind of like a once in a millennium or once in millennia kind of time period and within this period these are the phases 2020 and 2021 were very destabilizing and abnormal this is the covid times and then 2022 and 2023 were periods of some kind of stabilization it was somewhat normal and stable i'm afraid 2025 and 2026 will be again very destabilizing and abnormal not necessarily another pandemic but basically uh, there are various other possibilities i'll cover next year but these will be really problematic years and we are in a transition phase right now this current year so this is not really a very auspicious year unfortunately and in general this is a period when slowly different war fronts will develop and they will start slowly uh, increasing towards 2030 2031 when a major war is likely so the cold war between nato and the sino russia alliance will intensify during this year and also the world war fronts like ukraine etc will continue during this year and unfortunately some new war fronts may develop either actively or uh, just some confrontation and then basically cool down but basically potential for a war front later that kind of things can happen in some parts of the world during this year luckily as far as the world economy is concerned there will be some countries that will suffer that will uh, where economy will seriously suffer and some countries where it will do well but overall for the major powers of the world economy will be quite okay during this year even though it seems like we are just about to get into a recession i believe world will uh, stay off a recession during this year also let us look at look into some of the major nations of the world in usa the political logjam and the social unrest uh, that has been going on for a few years will unfortunately continue to mount and the sense of losing the american dream that is plaguing the american society 
will unfortunately deepen during this year. And uh, I'm afraid there may be natural disasters of historic proportions during this year. And as far as economy is concerned, I don't believe a recession is coming. I have been saying it for a few years now uh, with strong headwinds and economists predicting a recession soon. I said in the last two or three years that there is no recession. I stick to the same thing this year also. Uh, I believe that economy, there will be ups and downs, it will not be smooth, but economy will uh, sustain and I don't see a recession or depression in the coming year. And as far as the employment situation is concerned, usually we are, whenever we are in a period of transition, companies consolidate, companies basically let go of some employees and hire new employees because there is, there is a change in direction that many companies explore because we are, we are in a period when technology is rapidly changing. So there will be, you will see some unemployment, but I don't think overall employment situation will be bad. I believe that uh, companies will also be hiring during this year. So in general, unemployment will not be a major problem during this year. And as for the November elections of US, one thing I want to say is this year, for US as well as for the world, is a year unlike any we have seen in our lifetimes. Especially in US politics, this will be a crazy, crazy year. So I, I will make a prediction closer to November once we clearly know who are running because I will not be surprised even now, even though it is almost guaranteed that it will be Biden versus Trump again, I will not be surprised if there are some changes on the ticket. Coming, coming the convention time. Uh, one of the parties may replace their candidate with somebody else, uh, either presidential candidate or vice presidential candidate. So I will, I will wait for all the four charts and make a clear call. But my early call is, if the election is indeed between Biden and Trump, Biden has a much better chance of winning than Trump does. And the other thing is, as far as Trump is concerned, his hold on the Republican base is continuing. But his legal problems, in spite of some, some respite that he got recently, his legal troubles will intensify over the coming months and years. And particularly, the time period till June is pretty decent for him, even though April has some concern. Till June, it is pretty decent for him, but from June till next June is a very problematic year for him. This is a year when it is likely that he will be convicted in a, in a, in a, in a case. So uh, there are a lot of wild cards in this election. So I will make a prediction closer to the election. But it's very, very unlikely that Trump will come back as the president of US. It will be either Biden or somebody else. As far as India <coughs> is concerned, I'm afraid some instability and riots are possible in the April-May time period, uh, around the election time period, early uh, rounds of election. Unfortunately, it may be instigated by some global forces in collusion with some local forces, and they will push the narrative that Modi ji is a bigoted fascist, and democracy in India is at risk, and this is basically an election to save democracy, etc. And they will also resort to a lot of populist measures during this election, so this election will get really dirty and there will be an all out effort to bring down Modi ji and not allow him to have a third term. But my expectation is that Sri Narendra Modi will be back for third term with a very clear majority. And I'm expecting some destabilizing events in the next few weeks. So also right now, uh, Saturn Mars are very close, almost uh, almost closely conjoined. So I'll wait for a couple more weeks till Saturn and, Saturn and Mars separate before I make a clear prediction on what is the, what kind of majority we are talking about. Uh, but at this time, I expect that it will be close to what they had earlier, not something significantly higher, like some people are expecting 400 plus. I don't think that's going to happen. At the same time, it will not be significantly less than what they had in the last election. It will be similar. But I will make a I will make a clearer call and also some key states. I will like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, etc. 
I'll make calls uh, after uh, after April 26, after Saturn Mars conjunction ends. But but based on the election date that is announced and also based on the annual charts and the dashas etc., uh, I believe that Narendra Modi ji will be back. Uh, this is uh, you have to you have to give one thing to Rahul Gandhi. This is his best chance. The current year is his best chance to be prime minister, but I don't think it's going to happen. And after the election, some upheaval in some key ministries is possible. Uh, some some changes, big changes are likely. And also, uh, in, in the third term, they will pursue a very aggressive legislative agenda. And some of it will be based on pro-business policies and acting some pro-business changes so that the taking off of Indian economy will be aided further with the new policies. That is one area of focus. The other area of focus may be undoing some more historic injustices that were meted out to some communities in India over the last few decades and centuries. And as far as economy is concerned, India will be one of the best faring economies in the next year also. So US economy will survive without a recession, but Indian economy will be doing pretty well during the coming year. And I predicted last year that Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, his good time will end in mid-August uh, 2023, and between August 2023 and August 2024, and before the 2024 election time, he will be in deep trouble. He is, uh, he is basically uh, being pursued by the enforcement directorate, and he is in jail right now. Uh, some people may believe that this is political persecution, and after the election, he will come out, and there is no strong case against him, but I'm afraid the case against him is likely to be very strong and is likely to be in deep trouble this is this is a this is a serious long term change for him and some more big names uh, will be in trouble during the during the coming year uh, more people in the anti corruption push can get in trouble and one more thing i expect in terms of local politics is sri narendra modi and amit shah will turn their focus to west bengal after this election because I expect that BJP will fare really well in the Lok Sabha elections uh, in 2024 in West Bengal. Uh, and I, I expect that Mamta Banerjee's iron grip on the state of West Bengal will weaken during the coming year. So seeing an, uh, seeing an opening after the uh, uh, Lok Sabha election results, they will turn the focus to West Bengal and take some aggressive steps which will help them with the assembly election next year. And uh, just like Kejriwal ji, Mamta Banerjee ji's uh, good period also ended. But the thing is, perhaps because she is a, she is a devotee of Mother Kali and Durga, and she is known to do a lot of pujas in spite of her public conduct. So either because of her sadhana, the rituals that are being done by her and for her by others, either because of that, or other, other factors that I don't know. She hasn't really fallen like Kejriwal ji, but the thing is, even if sadhana can slow down fall that is destined in a dasya, also when a dasya changes, things may not immediately happen. Sometimes it can take a take an antar dasya or two, so it can take a few years, but the thing is, her good time is over. So uh, sooner or later she will fall, and they will focus on that after this election. And even though there has been an increasing bonhomie between U.S. and uh, India, especially between the defense, uh, defense departments and the uh, State Secretary of U.S., Anthony Blinken and Sri Jai Shankarji, there's a lot of uh, bonhomie in the recent years. While I expect it to keep going stronger and stronger over the years, in this particular year, some setbacks are possible in the relation with U.S. There may be some uh, diplomatic incidents and some tensions, but I, I expect this to be a short-term thing, not a long-term problem. And on the other hand, when it comes to Israel, the bonds between Israel and India will strengthen during this year. Because, because this is an election year in U.S., U.S. will be hot and cold during the year with respect to Israel's pursuit of 
justice for the justice against Hamas and terrorism that is targeted at Israel. So US may be hot and cold, sometimes supporting, sometimes basically going back, just based on what the opinion polls say, US policy may be changing, but India will have a very clear and strong policy of support to Israel. And one more thing is India may have some increasing tensions with a neighbor. And uh, some tension with Pakistan is possible, but more, more uh, likely there will be some tension with China over some border, uh, over the border situation. But I, I expect it to just result in diplomatic tension and some minor skirmishes, but not really an outright war with China during this year. Now coming to China. I'm afraid China will continue bold and aggressive moves in South China Sea. I don't expect a war. I expect US to give some space to China and basically not cross the red lines that China sets, but China will be very strong and set some clear red lines. But as a result of that, there will be increasing tensions with US, India, and also Australia. And based on China's New Year chart, especially in the second half of this year or first half of next year, a major terrorist attack is possible in China in the in, uh, in, in in that period and it can be a it can be a major one that that affects the the psyche of the country the way people look at things so and also it may affect the economy it may be a it may be a major attack either terrorist attack or unexpected attack from outside basically uh, it is possible that some areas that are some bord areas bordering afghanistan may be the source of the problem and there may also be some troubles in the economy in China. The Chinese economy has been a bit weak in the, in the previous year and it may get worse in the coming year. And because of the economy and because of the, because of the perceived at attacks, the morale of the masses will be affected during this year. So this is, this is something that will feed into China's aggression in the coming years and forcing China to... Uh, get into some wars in the coming years, but the groundwork will be done during this year. As far as Russia is concerned, the Ukraine war, I'm afraid the window of opportunity for peace closed long back. And as I said in my last year's video, China is likely to be involved in conflicts for a few more years, probably till 2030, till the major war that I expect in 2030, 2031 timeframe and it will remain aggressive in the Eurasia region. Uh, Sweden joining NATO and basically the expansion of NATO in Europe in, the, in, in areas bordering Russia will make Russia very nervous and Russia will take some aggressive steps in that region. And Putin, after Navalny's death, uh, there was some show of uh, dissent against Putin and also there was a terrorist attack, even though a small one in mainland Russia. And there are some rumors that Putin's health is, uh, health is bad and he's suffering a terminal disease. But the thing is, astrologically, I expect that Putin will strengthen his grip over Russia. I see no danger to Putin or Putin's agenda, war-based agenda for Russia. Country will go along with it in the coming year. Let's uh, quickly look at India's neighbors. Pakistan, the economy will recover somewhat during this year. It will still not be perfect. There will still be problems, but there'll be some recovery compared to the last year. But unfortunately, the political instability will continue to simmer during this year. And Pakistan may have rising tensions with neighbors. Uh, of course, India is one possibility. I don't expect a war but I expect some tensions with India, but more than India, I expect tensions with Afghanistan. Tensions between Afghanistan and Pakistan will mount during this year. And surprisingly, Pakistan may have tensions with their long time backer, China also during the coming year, relating to some border areas and also trade, etc. And also Pakistan's uh, role in Afghanistan. So based on various factors, China and Pakistan, there may be some eyes between them during the coming year. And among India's neighbors, Bangladesh will be relatively better off during the coming year. Their economy will be reasonably strong 
and also their relations with India will be improving during this year. So Bangladesh has a pretty decent year. And as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, <coughs> the political instability and the uh, uh, troubles in the economy will continue, but things will somewhat stabilize during this year. The situation will be somewhat stable during this year. It will not be as bad as the last couple of years. And Afghanistan will push for stronger relations with India and they will have increasing tensions with Pakistan during this year. And also some economic troubles are possible in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan may also be a center of a stage for a cold war between India and China. And Nepal, unfortunately, this is not a great year for Nepal. Some political unrest is possible and some also some danger to the royal family is possible. And some economic troubles are possible during this year. This is a this is a pretty average year for Nepal, average to below average. And Bhutan, their economy will be strong during this year, just like Bangladesh. And unfortunately, some tensions with China over some border areas are, is possible during the coming year for Bhutan. And let's go to Middle East. Uh, Iran will engage in aggressive global posturing during this year. And in, in, I, I'm afraid Iran will be involved in some military actions, but without getting into a direct war. So there will be, it will be like a cold war between Iran on one hand and Israel and NATO on the other hand. And there will be some clashes. Iran proxies will be engaging in violence and then Israel and NATO will be reacting. And Iran will be uh, engaging in some tit for tat actions. So that will intensify during the coming year. Unfortunately, Iran economy may struggle during the coming year. And as far as Israel is concerned, I'm, ex I'm afraid the war will continue, not only continue, but it may expand during the coming year. There may be, there may be other Middle Eastern countries that get, that get involved in the, in the war that Israel started against Hamas last year. And the political instability will continue and also it will actually increase during this year and the effort to topple Netanyahu will continue. But my overall assessment, I have to look closer, but based on a cursory look, my assessment is that Netanyahu will survive all the challenges to uh, his, his power. And also, some of these challenges as reported in the Western media may be somewhat blown up. As far as Saudi Arabia is concerned, some economic troubles are possible in Saudi Arabia during this year. And the reforms that Saudi Arabia initiated a year or two back will continue during this year. And the iron grip of the ruler, MBS, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, will continue during this year. So in, uh, his reforms will be outward looking rather than inward looking. So reforms will be where they don't affect him directly or his control over the country. So he will try to reform and re reduce the role of clergy, etc. But at the same time, politically and militarily, his grip will continue. <coughs> now let's go to Europe. UK will have rising discontent in the nation. Just like I said in US, the sense of American dream is fading away, deepening during this year. Similarly, in UK also, there will be a sense of the country is just falling off a cliff. So that will be the sense prevail prevailing sense in the country, but still I expect that Rishi Sunak will ward off challenges to his leadership. And in France, this year, some political unrest related to immigration, some backlash against immigration from right-wing groups may become stronger during this year, and there may be a lot of political unrest relating to immigration. And in Germany, economy does pretty well during this year compared to the rest of the countries in the neighborhood of Germany. And also, Germany will assume an increased leadership role in Europe. So Germany's clout will increase within Europe during this year. So Germany will be a big player. As Russia's challenge to Europe and Eurasia region increases, Germany will start playing a bigger role and work closely with NATO and US. Australia <coughs> will also have some increased tensions with China during this year. And 
I don't know how it's possible in Australia, but astrologically speaking, a terrorist attack is possible in Australia during this year. And some economic troubles are possible in Australia during this year. Basically, the economy may not be doing as well as India or US. And Japan, on the other hand, which is in the same neighborhood, it will have a very strong economy. And it will also improve and strengthen its relations with US and India. So basically, Japan will have a Japan will have a stronger role in the Pacific region. Canada, the diplomatic tensions that we have seen in the last few months, I'm afraid they may persist for a few more months and possibly for the rest of the year. So there will be persistent diplomatic tensions with uh, some other countries, especially India. And the social and political unrest in Canada will keep simmering during this year. So these are some of the expectations that I have based on the new year charts. Now we will do some generic stuff. Whatever I have said so far is my own assessment of the respective charts of various countries and the world. And now we'll do some generic stuff, which is applicable to all countries. First, uh, the importance of Panchanga. Panchanga basically ref literally means Pancha plus Anga, five limbs. So these are the five limbs of time. There are five different measures of time in given in Panchanga. Tithi, Vara or weekday, Nakshatra or moon sign, Yoga, which is a, an abstract construct based on sun and moon longitudes by adding them. And then Karana, which is basically a portion of Tithi, derived from Tithi. These are the five elements in Panchanga. And Sastra say, Tithe, Sriyama, Pnoti, Vara, the Ayusha Vardhanam, Nakshatra, Tharte, Papam, Yoga, Droga, Nivaranam, Karanat, Kari, Siddhischa, Pancha, Angasya, Phalam, Tvidam. What it means is, the, the five Angas are associated with five elements. Of course, the, this is from something else, not this verse. And the verse basically maps these different aspects to these Angas. Tithi gives prosperity. Vara gives longevity. Nakshatra removes sins. Uh, removes evil karmas and gives you good karmas and yoga helps you overcome diseases and karna will give you success in work and some people naively think that if you just do panchanga shravanam you listen to panchanga shravanam on ukadi day or every day at the beginning of the day you read what is the panchanga of that day what is the tithi vara nakshatra then you get these results that's not really how it works that is very simplistic the way the real mechanism is if you are picking a muhurta for doing something important, you're starting a new activity and you pick a time for it because at that time, that activity, something is starting. So you want to give it a good horoscope because it's like a newborn baby, the work that you are starting at that time. So in that muhurta chart, make sure that tithi and the planet ruling the tithi is strong if you want prosperity. If you want to, if you are doing some sadhana, for example, to remove your sins, make sure that nakshatra and the planet warning it is strong. And if you want to, if you are taking a new medicine or something, you want to overcome diseases, make sure that yoga and the planet warning the yoga is strong in the chart and so on. So that is how it is really meant to be used. But in any case, doing Panchanga Sravanam uh, before uh, the year starts is a custom in India. So there is something called Navanayakas and Upanayakas, the nine the nine member planetary cabinet and the sub -cab cabinet basically kind of like uh, you you have these portfolios in the in the governments right so it's kind of like that so uh, one, one small word here the way these are computed in the sastras my strong assessment is that there is a corruption there there is this is not really this was meant to be different for, for different countries Whereas the way they are computed now, they are pretty much the same for different countries. And occasionally, there may be two different values depending on whether it's before sunrise uh, on one day or the other day. So there are two different options. All the countries will fall in one of the baskets for some of these. But in general, these are the same for all countries. But I, exp I think that there is a corruption here. But I will just respect the tradition. And until I, I confidently reform it, I'll just follow the tradition. So I'll give you the... Uh, cabinet and the 
and the ascribed uh, results. So the king Raja for this year is Mars, which basically means that uh, the rulers will be very aggressive and bold during this year. And also there may be some war mongering among rulers. Fortunately, the mantri or minister is Saturn. So uh, those who are advising the kings, advising the rulers, they will show some restraint and they will be, uh, they will be very pragmatic and somewhat sad. And army chief, commander or Senadipati is also Seni. So army chiefs don't say, yeah, let's rush into a war. They basically pull back the kings and say, you need more planning, do it slowly. So basically that's, the, that's a blessing. And Sasyadipati for agriculture is Mars and Dhanyadipati for grains is Moon. So one is a Shubhagraha or Somyagraha, one is a Krorograha, one is benefic, one is malefic. So uh, for agriculture, this is a mixed year. <coughs> for Argha, Arghadipati or the controller of the prices is Saturn. So uh, unfortunately, the inflation, he's a Krorograha, so uh, a malefic planet. So unfortunately, there may be inflation may keep increasing during this year. This is not a good year for controlling the inflation and bringing the prices down. And for rains, uh, Maghadipati is also Seni, so rains will be scarce during this year. And non-dry commodities, uh, Rasadipati is Jupiter, so various juicy commodities or watery communities, wet community, uh, commodities like fruits, ghee, that kind of stuff, they will be in ample supply and people can make lot of profits on them. And dry commodities, are ruled by Mars. Dry commodity uh, basically near Sadhipati. Dry commodities means uh, various uh, agricultural products that are dry in nature and various gemstones, etc. So because he is Mars, the prices will increase and they will be in short supply during the year. And also commodities that are shown by the nature of Mars, who is a aggressive planet, red planet. So some, for example, some red grains, there may be a lot of, uh, lot of grains from them and also some grains that are grown in red soil. So that kind of stuff may be in uh, better supply. And also Mars is the planet of wars, aggression. So military equipment, this is a great year for the sale of military equipment. So even though there may not be any new war starting, in anticipation, in, in, in lieu of, because of the increasing tensions in the world, Military equipment will be sold a lot during this year. This is a great year for it. The Purohita or priest for this year is Mars. So a priest will be a little angry and aggressive during this year. And the Parikshaka is Mars, so examiner. So exam papers will be very difficult for students. So if students don't do well, be a, have a show some understanding. And the accountant or Ganaka for this year is Buddha who is the natural accountant. So basically accountants will do a very good job during this year. And the, the local ruler, Gramanayaka is Shani, Gramapalaka is Shani. So what it means is uh, at the local levels also, the rulers at the local levels will show a lot of restraint and they will be somewhat sad um, because of things that are happening in their neighborhoods. And the, and the Daivagna or astrologer for this year is Shukra. So astrologers will be very pragmatic and they will make good predictions and they will be very worldly wise during this year. But apart from this, in general, looking at the planetary positions, I think that this is one of the craziest years we have seen in a long time and it will be very difficult for astrologers to predict clearly because people think that astrologers have a TV in their mind in which they see what is going to happen. It's, that's not how it works. So you have nine planets, 12 Rasis, 27 Nakshatras, and they correspond to so many millions of different things. Mm -hmm. So mapping, mapping is not one to one. It is one to many. So it is very difficult to make good predictions. So this is a very difficult year for astrologers to make predictions. Though this particular thumb rule says that astrologers will be very successful and worldly wise during this year. Ashwadipati is Shani and Gajadipati is Mars, which means the common vehicles will be in short supply and there will be inflation uh, increasing prices 
and the luxury vehicles will be more oriented towards uh, sports and performance because Mars is the aggressive planet. And Pashuna Madhapati is Shani, so this is a bad year for animals, domestic animals as well as wild animals. And Devana Madhapati is Mars, so guards are controlled by Mars. So guards will be angry. In other words, you have to pray harder to guards. Guards are not pleased about what is happening on earth. And Narana Madhapati and also Srina Madhapati, men and women both are controlled by Shani. So, uh, in general, people will be sad and very uh, pragmatic and show a lot of restraint. And Vastrajapati is Guru, so there will be a lot of variety available in terms of clothes. And also some traditional kind of clothes may become more fashionable during this year because Jupiter shows tradition. And Ratnajapati is Shani, so various gemstones will be in short supply and their prices will be increasing. And Rukshajapati is Chandra. So he is a Somyagraha, but also he is, he waxes, waxes and wanes. So trees doesn't just mean trees, it means environment. So this is a relatively better year for environment, but things will wax and wane. There will be periods when good things happen for environment and periods when bad things happen. So it's an unstable period, but with some good happening. And then uh, uh, Vyaparajapati is uh, Venus. So for business, it is Venus, so businesses will do very well. Businesses will be, in general, business across the world will be strong during this year. And Sarvadesho Jyogapati, our employment lord, is Saturn. So this is basically not a great year for employment. But again, based on the charts, I believe that in US and also in India, employment will be pretty strong during this year. And finally, the Pashupalaka, or cowherd, for this year is Yama. So again, it's not a good thing for domestic animals. Now, I will identify some key transits during this year. And the idea is you can do some prayers around that time. On April 26, which is just a couple of weeks from now, Jupiter will move from Aries to Taurus, from Mesha to Vrishabha. Oh, there is a typo here. This is Aquarius. And Saturn will move on March 20 from Aquarius to Pisces, from Kumbha to Meena. So remember these two dates, April 26 this year and March 20 next year. And by the way, one small word, many astrologers may take May 1 here or some other date in May, uh, early May. Uh, unfortunately, the, there is a parameter in astrology called Ayanamsa. It was, it was basically arbitrarily fixed by a bureaucrat who was close to Nehru. Basically, in different parts of India, people were reckoning festivals differently. They were celebrating on different dates. Nehru wanted to standardize it. So he asked his friend N.C. Lahiri, who was neither an astrologer nor an astronomer, to standardize things. So he basically uh, standardized it, a bureaucrat. And all the famous astrologers of that time, like Dr. B.V. Raman, protested and said that this is wrong. This is against tradition, but still that became the norm. And now, a few decades later, nobody even questions. It is understood that Lahiri Ayanamsa, named based on that bureaucrat, N.C. Lahiri, is the correct Ayanamsa and people don't even question it. But based on the correct Ayanamsa, it is April 26, not May 1. And same, same here. This will be off by a few days if you use the, the mainstream Lahiri Ayanamsa, which is not really correct. A few more key transits. See, even though all planets are going one way around sun, because earth is also going around sun, with respect to earth, it will seem like a planet is going forward sometime and backward sometime and forward sometime. So there are three transits. One is going forward, one is going backward, one is the transition period when you slowly stop going backward and start going forward. So that's called stationary transit. So at a particular time and a particular day, planet becomes zero speed. So uh, that is a very important time. At that time, the planet is able to focus well. In other words, if I am driving very fast, whatever I see on the, on the side of the road, I can't see clearly. Whereas, if I am driving slowly, I can observe all the details. So similarly, when a planet is stationary, whichever positions in your own horoscope it is touching, either touching or aspecting, it will give results relating to those positions. So it is very important time. Usually, 
around the stationary time if any key sensitive positions in your horoscope are affected you will see some important events around that time a month before or after and also a planet going forward is akin to somebody in a state of rajas whereas a planet going backward is akin to somebody who's in a state of tamas and a planet that is stationary is akin to somebody who's in a state of sattva and sattva is really good for focus and getting things done so that is why stationary transits particularly of jupiter and saturn are very important so on october 9 jupiter will become stationary he will he is going forward right now and he will become zero speed that day and he will start going backward and again on february 4 he will become stationary again start moving forward so around these two dates a few days before and after you can pray to jupiter or if you know her astrology and you know which which points in your horoscope are touched by jupiter at, at on those dates you can worship devatas corresponding to what those positions show in your horoscope and secondly saturn he is again going forward right now on june 29 he will start he will stop and start going backward so this is one stationary transit and then he will stop the backward motion and start moving forward again on november 15 of this year so these two dates for saturn stationary transit so these are important dates when you can do sadhana and it can be very potent then some important planetary associations i will try to do some videos at least for a two, two or three of these closer to the date uh, basically when two planets that are maybe of inimical nature or contradicting natures either come together or exactly 180 degrees from each other aspecting each other those times conjunction or samsaptaka those times are very important times at that time around that time some unstable events can happen so on april 10 there is a saturn mars conjunction and when saturn and mars energies come together in the past terrible things happened for example world war 2 started around such a time so anyway so <coughs> 2024 april 10 is saturn mars conjunction and you can worship hanuman for that and also i made a video recently so you can watch that video and there are some prayers chanted in that video and then there is a mars rahu conjunction on may 20 there is a saturn sun conjunction on september 8 there is a sun ketu conjunction on september 29 there will probably be an eclipse around that and then there will be a saturn sun conjunction on march 12 next year and march 17 next year there will be a sun rahu conjunction so these are important ones so try to do some prayers around that time uh, a couple of weeks before and couple of weeks after and that is particularly important if that conjunction is happening close to a sensitive point in your own natal horoscope now combustion modjam venus will have a modjam shukra modjam from april 27 till july 10 and jupiter will have a modjam from may 4 to june 5 and venus will have a modjam from march 18 to uh, march 27 next year now pushkaras uh, again as i said because people use the mainstream lahira inamsa which is basically standardized by a bureaucrat who knew no astrology no astronomy based on that inamsa this is calculated to be may 1 so pushkaras are observed from may 1 but the real date is actually april 26 so and the pushkaras this year are for reva nadi also known as narmada nadi in the western part of india so around that time if you have if you have a chance you can go and uh, go and visit narmada nadi and take bath and do some prayers there <coughs> now eclipses uh, one word for people in india none of these eclipses are visible in india there is a penumbral lunar eclipse on 2024 september 17 18 and it is from 8:41 pm in the night till 12:48 am just after midnight based on the us east coast time eastern daylight saving time and the pura bhadra nakshatra utra bhadra nakshatra and mean rashi people should be particularly careful it can affect them and there is a total lunar eclipse next year on march 13 14 it starts just before midnight at 11:57 pm and ends around the sunrise time 61 am again eastern daylight saving time so us east coast time and this may affect uttar phalguni nakshatra people and also simha rashi and meen rashi people and uh, lunar eclipse affects moon 
whereas solar eclipse affects sun sun is like the atma and moon is like the manas and uh, our manas will resonate to something that is close to us but atma can resonate to anything in the universe because atma is connected so as a result the lunar eclipse is effective only if it is visible in your area but solar eclipse is effective it can impact your atma irrespective of where you are so by the way rahu and ketu just like i said sun and moon show atma and manas rahu ki ko shows bhaga and also getting things at any cost and ketu shows not caring about anything and moksha so either the uh, bhaga aspect or the moksha aspect can take over the manas or atma during these times that is why these are important times to do sadhana to fulfill a specific desire or to overcome all desires rahu or ketu <coughs> so these eclipses are not visible in india but i will mention the times in india so that at that time you can do some sadhana and the sadhana done during eclipse time is very effective according to sri vimlananda it is 1000 times more effective than at normal times on 2024 october 2nd and 2nd and 3rd uh, from 9:12 pm in india till 2:06 am early morning and in terms of the us east coast time it is 11:42 Uh, just before noon till 4:36 in the afternoon on October 2nd, there is a annual there is an annular solar eclipse. If it affects Hasta Nakshatra people and Kanja Rasi people particularly, and there is a partial solar eclipse next year on March 29. In India time, it is between 2:20 p.m. to 6:14 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. On US East Coast, it is early morning, 4:50 a.m. to 8:44 a.m. us east coast time and it may affect uttarabhadra nakshatra people and mean rasi people <coughs> now i will give a few standard numbers that are given in shastras uh, what you have to remember is readings that are just based on the moon sign and moon star are not reliable because we don't have just 12 or 27 different fortunes in the world there are millions of totally different people with totally different destinies as a matter of fact even twins who are born 2 or 3 minutes apart can have vastly different fortunes so uh, actually i'll give another example <coughs> if you think that you got somebody's horoscope correctly and made some good predictions for that person it is possible that the precision you have is still not like one second there may be like 10 seconds error still and then in a particular year a an annual chart that you looked at may be on the border if it is 10 seconds off it may be a different sign and the conclusions may be different and your assessment may be totally off so even if you think that you have one chart accurately it may still not be enough a particular year that is what happened with my kcr victory prediction in telangana elections last year so you need really accurate time for real astrology so jyotish has both macro and micro aspects and micro aspects are very difficult even when you think you have the correct time it may not still be correct enough so but, but the thing is you can't use that uh, for lot of people in mass so macro aspects are useful to give generic readings for lot of people at, in, at one time so that is what we do in panchanga shravanam but you have to take it with a pinch of salt or rather a bucket of salt So there are four numbers given for each rasi: uh, income or adayam, expense or vyayam, rajapujam or respect in society, aumanam or insult in society. So I'll just read these numbers, and you can pause and you can you can go through the slide carefully. Aries eight fourteen four three, Taurus Vrshava two eight seven three, Gemini Mithuna five five three six, Karka or Cancer fourteen two six six. Leo or Simha two fourteen two two, Virgo or Kanya five 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 two. Then for Libra or Tula two eight one five, Scorpio or Vishika eight fourteen five five, Sagittarius or Dhanus eleven five seven five, Capricorn or Makara fourteen fourteen three one, Aquarius or Kumbha fourteen fourteen six one, Pisces Mena eleven five two four. now there are some standard results given based on the 27 nakshatras and the way to interpret this is if a number if a if a number is odd it is good if a number is even it is average or moderate 
if the number is zero, which is a subcase of even, it is treated separately, then it is bad. So zero bad, odd good, other even numbers, non-zero even numbers, moderate. And the first column is for body, second column is for mind, and third column is for soul, atma, sarira, manas, atma. And no, uh, normally people just take the moon nakshatra and see it in all the three columns. Suppose moon nakshatra is Rohini, they say for body the result is 5, for mind the result is 0, for soul the result is uh, 4. But the thing is, the real way it is supposed to be used, even though it is a little difficult, that way is you take the nakshatra occupied by lagna and see it in the first column. Nakshatra occupied by moon, see it in the second column. Nakshatra occupied by sun, see it in the third column. So you may get one entry here, one entry here, one entry here. Okay. So if you understood, you use it that way. Otherwise, just take the moon nakshatra. Ashwini, 400, zero, zero. Bharani, 713. Kritika, 221. Rohini, 504. Mirgasira, 012. Ardra, 320. Punarvasu, 603. Pushyami or Pushya, 111. Ashresha, 424. Magha, 702. Pura Phalguni, 210. Uttra Phalguni, 523. Hasta, 001. Chitra, 314. Swati, 622. Visakha, 100. Anuradha, 413. Jyastha, 721. Mula, 204. Purvashadha, 512. Uttrashadha, 020. Sravanam, 303. Dhanishtha, also known as Sravishtha, 611. Satapishak, 124. Puravhadra, 402. Uttrabhadra, 710. Revati, 223. Now, there are another set of results given based on the 28 nakshatras, based on Saradobhadra chakra. So, here you use Abhijit also. Uh, it is effect basically Uttarashadha fourth pada and also a small part of Sravana. Uh, if you use Jagannath Hora, it will show you the 28 nakshatra based nakshatra occupied by moon. You can find it. The results given for Ashwini, Pushya, Swati and Abhijit are quarrels. Kalaham. Bharani, Ashresha, Vishakha, Sravanam is jewelry or bhushanam, abharanam. Kritika, Magha, Anuradha, Dhanishtha, health problems, anarogyam. Rohini, Purphalguni, Jashtha, Sathvishak, arogyam, good health. Mirgasira, Uttarphalguni, Mula, Purvabhadra, Arthalabham, financial gains. Ardra, Hasta, Purvashadha, Uttarabhadra, mental worries, Manastapam. Punarvasu, Chitra, Uttrashadha, Revati, respect in society, Gauravam. So these are the results. Now, these are generic results and now what I will do is, I will suggest some remedies based on key transits for each Rasi. I will go through the 12 Rasis, identify. See, if you take Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, etc., they change Rasis very fast. So one month may be good, one month may be bad. But if you take Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu and Ketu, they stay in the same Rasi for a long time, for a year or two and a half years, one and a half years, like that. So uh, if it is particularly good or bad, there may be corresponding themes in life over a long period of time. So I will identify particularly good ones or particularly bad ones and suggest some prayers that can accentuate the positive or suppress the negative. So I will, I will, before I do that, a few keywords. I may tell you to worship, for example, Hanuman, but you may not be attached to Hanuman. You may have a different devata that you have attachment to. So fortunate are those who have an attachment to a particular devata. So if that is the case for, with you, stick to that devata. There is no need to worship some other devata. All the standard devatas that people worship, like Ganesha, Lakshmi, Shiva, Vishnu, Rama, Narsimha, Krishna, Durga, Lalita, etc. They are capable of giving all results. So <coughs> you can you can ignore this if you if you are attached to a particular devata. And then uh, some people like doing small mantras and some people like long prayers. If you have good focus, your mind can stay still and focus on something very effectively then I suggest doing small mantras. You just keep chanting it, keep your back, neck and head straight, close your eyes and keep chanting the mantra, thinking that there is divine presence inside you and outside you everywhere. 
and keep offering that mantra to that divine presence and you will enjoy it and it will work for you on the other hand if somebody's mind is very very much wavering no focus at all then stick to long prayers like which is asana stotram durga saptasati lalita asana stotram etc then uh, if you you have to basically keep track of where you are so that anchors the mind to some extent so that is better for you in general our rishis unlike other religion in sanatana dharma rishis never said this is the only way they always gave many many different ways so that people have different aptitudes and for different people different ways will work better and you can use specific counts uh, do this mantra 108 times or 1000 times like that but if you don't have any bhava any feeling emotion in what you are doing it is not really that effective so if you have only limited time instead of rushing with counts put an alarm for that 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half hour and then do as many times as you you can but do slowly and enjoy what you are doing instead of saying om namah shivaya namah shivaya namah shivaya say om namah shivaya om namah shivaya then it will work better and but at the same time if you just want to enjoy everything that you do you will never force yourself to even start something our nature is to just be lazy that is our inherent nature so uh, you have to force yourself and mechanically do to some extent at least in the beginning but it can't be like that forever after some time you have to start enjoying it to some extent so you have to strike the right balance between enjoying it and pushing yourself pushing yourself is pingal nadi uh, surya nadi and then enjoying what you are doing and relaxing is chand nadi or uh, ida nadi you have to strike a balance between them for anything to work well so try to if necessary experiment and find something where you you have that balance and some people ask what is the point of doing sadhana it may can you really postpone the karmas of fruits now it depends on the nature of the karma some karmas are known as prarabdha karma prarabdha is the gerund form of the verb prarabdha which means begun it has already begun uh, fructifying so if the fruit of a karma has already begun being given to you begun uh, is 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 uh, is result then you can't change it how much ever sadhana you do you have to experience the fruit on the other hand there are sanchita karmas and agami karmas which are not necessary to experience in this life or a, in a particular dasha at the current time etc so it is possible to postpone them to a future life or a future dasha future year etc so that is very useful sometimes so with pujas and various rituals you can you can postpone the fruits of some karmas and apart from it the other important benefit is you have a nice state of mind where you are not further committing bad karmas usually what happens is when we do bad karma and nature is giving the fruit of that karma to us nature uses somebody as an instrument for delivering that fruit and we despise that person we become angry we start fighting with that person so because of our resistance to the fruits of our own karmas we commit further karmas so this compounding of this cycle of karmas can be ended if you basically have some control over yourself and don't engage in unnecessary activities you fight only when you there is a dharmic purpose not just venting so that basically the state of mind can be given by sadhana so it is useful to do spiritual sadhana irrespective of whether it seems like it is working or not because nothing goes waste all effort will bear fruit eventually for mashrasi people or aries sign people which is ashwini bharani and kritika fashpadam uh, jupiter will be in the second house from april 26 but he will be a iron form a lohamurti so he can give you lot of wealth but he may not give it that easily so if you worship uh, jupiter planet directly or some god who is like a guru figure like dattatreya dakshinamurti jagannatha or if you believe in sai baba then sai baba or any guru figure that you believe in if you worship them that can help you with financial status and seni is in the 11th house till next march so this is a good time for material gains 
and but he is a tamramurti a copper form so it will it will take some sadhana so if you worship venkateshwara uh, for saturn in the 11th house venkateshwara or vishnu sahasrama stotram that can give you uh, financial gains uh, material gains overall but your sadhe sati 7 and 1/2 years of saturn will start next march so and also he will be iron form so that may be the first one third maybe the worst one third actually unfortunately so, and also rahu is also in the 12th house though he is a rajadamurti he is still in the 12th house so right now for rahu worshiping rahu planet or durga or venkateshwara is very beneficial and after march 20 worshiping venkateshwara or vishnu is very beneficial and also for saturn in the 12th house you can do mrutyunjaya mantra you can do rudra chamakam and the other thing is ketu is in the 6th house so to overcome any problems that you are you have been facing for a while health problems or enemies etc and to have success in your endeavors you can worship ganesha or ketu planet vrishabh rasi or taurus uh, moon sign people which is kartika second third and fourth padam rohini and mrugasara first and second padam for them jupiter will be in the first house as a golden murti after april 26 so uh, that is not a good transit so worshiping if there are any health problems it may be because of jupiter in the first house health problems or mental state problems then i suggest worshiping uh, jupiter planet or worshiping dattatreya or dakshamurti and for and before march if if in the last year and half or so if you are experiencing some slowdown in career it may be because of saturn in the 10th house of career so worshiping venkateshwara or vishnu sahasrama stotram can be beneficial and rahu is in the 11th house as a lohamurti iron form so worshiping rahu or durga or venkateshwara can be good for material gains and if there are any problems relating to children then that may be because of ketu in the fifth house of children so as a lohamurti so worshiping ketu planet or ganesha can be helpful now mithun rashi or gemini moon sign people which is mrugasara third and fourth padam ardra and punarvasu first second and third padam for them jupiter is in the 11th house till april 26 it's not really a lot of time so let's ignore it uh but during this time if you want to maximize your material gains you can worship jupiter or you can worship dattatreya or dakshinamurti and saturn will be in the ninth house till march so if your father is having some health problems or other issues for the benefit of father you can worship uh, saturn planet or venkateshwara or vishnu sahasrama stotram and after next march there is a chance of some career problems so for that venkateshwara will be or vishas namastotra will be helpful and also rahu is also in the 10th house as a tamramurti so even right now for the last several months you may be experiencing career problems if so if there are some setbacks or bad name in career it is because of rahu in the 10th house of career uh, worship durga or rahu planet or venkateshwara and if your mother is facing some health problems or you don't have peace of mind it may be because of ketu in the fourth house of peace and mother so worship ganesha or ketu planet then karkarasi or cancer moon sign people which is punarvasu fourth padam pushyami and ashresha for them uh, jupiter is in the 10th house as an iron form so there may be some issues in career over the last year they will end soon but if you want if you want to do something about it you can worship jupiter or you can worship dattatreya or dakshinamurti but jupiter will be in the 11th house as a rajatamurti after april 26 so for material gains after april 26 you can worship dattatreya or dakshinamurti or jupiter and without worship also he will give reasonable results and saturn is in the 8th house till march 20 so if you are experiencing some health problems or anxiety or ten- various tensions i strongly recommend doing hanuman chalisa or mrutyunjaya mantra or rudra chamakam and because that is sat- saturn is a lohamurti so it may be really needed and after next march if there if there are any problems to your father 
worshipping venkateshwara or hanuman can be beneficial and also right now rahu is in the ninth house so if your father is experiencing some health problems or bad name etc it is because of rahu worship rahu or durga or venkateshwara and luckily ketu is in one of the three houses that are good for him he is in the third house of initiative so if you worship ganesha or ketu planet it can increase your initiative and drive to get things done and give you momentum in life for simha rasi or leo moon sign people which is magha pura phalguni and uttar phalguni first padam for them jupiter is in the ninth house till april 26 so this is a great time for uh, your fortune blooming and to help that you can worship jupiter or dattatreya or dakshinamurti and after april 26 jupiter will be in the 10th house so try to lay low in career don't act too smart because it may not go well and it may land you in trouble so be very careful and if still problems are coming in spite of your lying low then worship dattatreya or dakshinamurti or jupiter planet and it may be needed because he is an iron form and if there are any marital Uh, disharmony problems over the last uh, year and half or so it may be because of seni in the seventh house of marriage so worship for that i recommend worshiping hanuman or uh, doing vishesasana mastotram or venkateshwara and then after march next year saturn will be a lohamurti iron form in the eighth house so ashtam seni is not good I strongly recommend doing Hanuman Chalisa or Mrityunjay Mantram or Rudra Chamakam during this period. And uh, without waiting till March 20, it may already be happening. There may be some anxiety, health problems, tension, and a feeling of being lost. That may be because of Rahu in the eighth. So for that, worship Rahu planet or Durga Devi. Uh, for Kanya Rasi or Virgo Moon sign people, which is uttara phalguni second third and fourth padam uh, hasta and chitra first and second padam for those people jupiter will be in the ninth house soon after april 26 and he is a tamramurti a copper form so it is a good year for the blossoming of your fortune and also for doing lot of dharmic activities so to maximize that you can worship dattatreya or dakshinamurti or jagannatha or brahaspati planet directly and till next march saturn will be in the 6th house which is a very good house for him one of the three best houses for saturn so it is good for vanquishing your enemies overcoming various problems and improving your health etc and to maximize that good result you can worship uh, venkateshwara or hanuman or vishwas namastotram and then if there are any health if there are any marital problems it may be because of rahu in the 7th house as a lohamurti so worship rahu or durga for that and after march 20 saturn will also join so doing some worship of venkateshwara can also help help and if there are any overall health problems particularly those that are tough to diagnose then it may be because of ketu in the first house of health uh, and ketu gives undiagnosable crazy weird strange problems and for that worship ketu or ganesha and you can do a ganpati homam also and if you go to my website vedicastrologer.org or easyhoma.org or easyhavan.org you can download the homa manuals and there are procedures that are that are so simple that you can just do them in 10 minutes 5 to 10 minutes for tula rasi or libra moon sign people which is chitra third and fourth padam swati and visaka first second and third padam people for them Uh, jupiter is in the 7th house it's a good time for getting married or for marriage to go well if if you already married uh, but he is going to be in the 8th house after april 26 so if there are any health problems or tensions after after april 26 it may be because of jupiter so worship jupiter planet or dattatreya or dakshinamurti and if there are any problems relating to children it may be because of saturn in the fifth house of children so uh, till next march 20 so worship for that the best is to worship vishwas namastotram or venkateshwara and after and rahu is in the sixth house of vanquishing enemies so 
to make a lot of progress, to overcome health problems, to overcome various enemies and to have success in the material world. Worshipping Rahu planet or Durga can be beneficial and after March 20, Saturn will also be in the 6th house. So also worshipping Venkateshwara can be beneficial. And Ketu is in the 12th house. So if you are spiritually inclined uh, to maximize your, uh, your detachment, worshipping Ganesha can be beneficial. And also, for example, if you are trying to go abroad, this is a conducive year, so worshipping Ganesha can be beneficial from that, that angle. For Vrishtika Rasi or Scorpio moon sign people, which is uh, Visaka fourth padam, Anuradha and Jyastha. For them, Jupiter will be in the 7th house, so if you are not married, there is a chance of getting married. And if you are married, marriage may be better. So to maximize that, after April 26, you can worship Jupiter planet or Tathatraya or Dakshinamurti and Saturn is in the fourth house as a Lohamurti, iron form. So there may be a lack of peace, lack of comfort in the mind. It's like you are lost, you are at sea. So if that is the case, if you feel lost, uh, I strongly recommend doing Rudra Chamakam or Mruchinjaya Mantram or Hanuman Charisa that can give you some peace of mind. And after next March, if there are some, actually let's jump to this first. Uh, Rahu is in the fifth house. So if there are any problems relating to children, it may be because of Rahu in the fifth house of children. So worship Rahu planet or Durga and it may, it, it will be compounded by Saturn also in the fifth house from March 20 next year. So worshipping Venkateshwara can also be or Vishnu can also be beneficial. And currently Ketu is in the eleventh house which is very conducive for material gains. So if you worship Ganesha or Ketu planet, it can give you material gains. For Dhanurasi people, Sagittarius moon sign or Mola, Purvashadha, Uttarashadha, Fashtpadam. For them, uh, Jupiter is in the fifth house. So this is good for your children, good for fame, good for overall success uh, till April 26. And to maximize it, you can worship Jupiter or Dattatraya or Dakshamurti. And Saturn is in the third house, which is one of the three best houses for him. So to maximize that and get a lot of initiative and momentum in your life. Worship Venkateshwara or Hanuman during the during this year. And, and Rahu is in the fourth house. So if you feel like you have no comfort, no peace of mind, you feel very uh, unhappy in general, I suggest worshipping Rahu or Durga Devi. That can give you some peace. And after March next year, Saturn will also be in the fourth house. So I suggest worshipping Venkateshwara or uh, Rudra Chamakam. And if there is any slowdown in career you have been experiencing, it may be because of Ketu in the 10th house of career. So worship Ganesha or Ketu planet for that. For Makar Rasi or uh, Capricorn moon sign people, which is Uttara, Shadha, third, second, third and fourth Padam, Sravanam, Dhanishtha, first and second Padam. For them, Jupiter is in the fourth house, which is good. He will be moving to fifth house, which is even better, uh, but as a Tamramurti. So after April 26 or even before, if you worship Jupiter or Dattatraya or Dakshamurti, it can give you peace now and it can give you a lot of success, fame and good things for your children, etc. after April 26. And you are in the, uh, you are in the last one third of seven and a half years of Saturn. Sade Sati, so, but this is probably not the worst. So you are probably okay, but you, if you are seeing the results of it and feeling a lot of anxiety, tensions and uh, life not going smoothly, I suggest chanting Mrichinjai Mantra or Drutta uh, Chamakam or Hanuman Chalisa regularly. And then after March 20, finally your Sade Sati is over and Saturn will be in the third house, a very desirable house for him. So suddenly, there, there may be a lot of positive momentum in life. So worshipping Venkateshwara or Hanuman can accentuate that. And also right now, Rahu may be giving that result to some extent, though he is an iron form, a Lohamurti. So worshipping uh, Durga Devi or Rahu or Venkateshwara can give you a lot of momentum in life. And then Ketu is in the ninth house. So if your father is experiencing some problems, health problems or various other issues, I suggest worshipping Ketu planet or uh, Ganesha, Ganapati. For Kumbharasi people, 
Jupiter will move from third house and an undesirable house to of the fourth house, a desirable house, and he will be a Rajasthamurti. So not many prayers will be needed, but still, if you worship Jupiter or Dattatreya or Dakshamurti, there can be some comfort in life, and you can you can feel nice in general. But you are still in the middle one third of Sade Sati, but is he is a Rajasthamurti, so this is probably not the worst. So it's okay. But after March next year, he will be in the second house. It will be the last one third, the last leg of Sade Sati. And it, it is not as good because he is a Tamramurti. So in general for Sade Sati, I suggest worshipping with Prachinjaya Mantra or Rudra Chamakam or Hanuman Chalisa on a regular basis. And Rahu is in the second house and Ketu is in the eighth house. So Ketu in the eighth may give accidents or strange problems, anxieties, etc. So if you are facing stress and anxiety, I suggest worshipping Ketu planet or Ganesha. Finally, uh, by the way, this was Dhanishtha third and fourth padam, Satvishak and Puravhadra first, second and third padam. So finally, Menrasi are Pisces moon sign people, which is Puravhadra fourth padam, Uttarabhadra and Revati. For them, Jupiter is in the second house, which is good for finances, but he is in iron form. So worshipping Jupiter or Dattatreya or Dakshamurti can be, or Jagannatha can be good for finances uh, till April, April 26 and they are in the first one third of Sade Sati and it may be the worst unfortunately because he is an iron form so, and after March 20 things will be somewhat better but still you have you have a lot of time to go in Sade Sati so get used to worshipping Saturn regularly for example you can do Senihoma every Saturday and in general worship Saturn you can also worship Hanuman or Mruchinjai Mantra or Rudra Chamakam Unfortunately, right now Rahu in the first house also can give you health problems. So, uh, he is a Tamramurti. So, worshipping Rahu planet or Durga can give you some uh, relief from the health problems. And if there are some marital problems, it may be because of Ketu in the seventh house of wedding, marriage. So, for that, worship Ketu planet or Ganesha. So, I hope that in an increasingly turbulent world, you can do some of these prayers and you can find some peace and happiness. I sincerely hope that. And I also hope that the world will move in the direction of dharmic and sustainable peace. People think peace is very important. Peace is important, no doubt. But an unsustainable peace or a dharmic peace is not really useful. You can have peace that is that will result in a lot of destruction later on. So I really hope that the world will move after all these turbulent years towards a sustainable and dharmic uh, equilibrium of peace. And again, Happy New Year Krodhi to all of you. Om Tat Sat Sarvam Sri Krishnar Panamastu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Sarve Jana Sukhino Bhavantu Yavad Bhumandale Sanatana Dharma Vardhatu Viseshataha Bharthakande America Vashe Tibet Rashtrecha Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much and Happy Lunar New Year Krodhi again. Thank you very much.